Welcome back to our lecture. In the previous sections, I talked about the culture and lean components of the DevOps methodology. And in this section, I want to talk about automation. And, and it's, there's no question that automation is an important part of DevOps. And it's oftentimes one of the components that companies really focus on when they begin to roll out DevOps methodologies within their organization. When we talk about automation and DevOps, the DevOps mantra is really, we need to automate everything that we possibly can. Because let's face it, human beings are relatively brittle. We make mistakes. If we try to engage in repeatable processes, more often than not, we make errors. And processes really have to be repeatable. If we are going to be deploying code through a code pipeline, then we have to be able to deploy that code the same way every single time. If we're testing our code, we want to follow the same testing processes. And automation ensures that our processes are repeatable. It's also one of the best ways to reduce cycle time because let's, you know, I mean, computers can do things way faster than human beings can. And if we need to improve, let's say, our testing process or our deployment process, one of the best ways to do that is to introduce automation. And finally, if we need to be able to scale our work, automation is really just about the only way we can do it effectively outside of simply hiring more people, which is a really expensive proposition. You can think of our, our software delivery process as being somewhat similar to an assembly line in a manufacturing plant. Now, I don't want you to get the impression that I'm looking at an assembly line from a Tayloristic standpoint. I, I talked about in terms of like the lean culture that we're really focused on the throughput of our process or throughput of, of the, the work through a system versus looking at the efficiency of any individual stage in our, our process. As work moves through our software organization, that work is queuing up at various places. Um, and, and it's oftentimes really hard to see those queues. Some of those queues are very visible, things like product backlogs and uh, QA tests are very visible sorts of cues that we might find in the organization. But there are all kinds of different handoffs which occur in a software development process which aren't very visible. You'll, you'll see that co some companies will implement Kanban boards, and these are very, very common in a manufacturing organization which has implemented lean practices. And the purpose of a Kanban board is to try to, to sort of surface many of the different cues that occur within an organization. And they allow us to see work in progress and see how work is flowing throughout the organization. As, as our code flows through the organization and as it ultimately is delivered to the customer, Oftentimes, we leverage code pipelines in a DevOps organization to automate the process of code delivery. So a code pipeline will automate all the steps between the time where software is checked into a version control system and then ultimately delivered to our customers in a production environment. The, the code pipeline pattern has a number of different benefits. It helps us to um, prevent the deployment of code which hasn't been thoroughly tested in our organization because it essentially assures us that code is going to be tested the same way every single time. Every single piece of code that we check into our version control system will ultimately go through the exact same process uh, as, as it as it you know, progresses on its journey into the production environment. 
And by, by building out a code deployment pipeline and automating this code delivery process, the code release process becomes faster and becomes more repeatable and ultimately more reliable. And that's what allows us to increase the frequency of deployments within our organization. These companies that are only deploying changes to production once a quarter or a couple times a year, oftentimes they're not following an automated code pipeline process. Their, their delivery process is very manual, very cumbersome. It can be unreliable, and that's why they're one of the reasons why their releases carry great risk, other, other than the fact that they're releasing so many changes at once. If we're able to automate the process of delivering code to customers, then we're able to work in much smaller batch sizes. We're able to release much smaller sets of changes, and therefore, our change can occur more frequently. So these code pipelines really en enable us to continuously deliver changes to customers. And I, I want you to think about a code pipeline as being something that, that delivers flow. It delivers a constant flow of change to our customers. That's really our goal in a DevOps organization is to, to optimize for the flow of changes through the organization and, and the, the, the value stream that we're delivering ultimately to our customers. In, in, a, in a traditional organization, the traditional organization is not, not really thinking about flow. It's, it's thinking about big batches of changes that are going to be delivered to customers all at once. We want to think in terms of small m amounts of changes, but changes which are delivered frequently to customers, a constant flow of change. Here's kind of a, an overview of what a, a code pipeline might look like. And we'll look at a, a number of these stages. Um, in, in fact, we have an entire lecture in this course that is focused on code pipelines. But I'll just give you a kind of a quick overview in this section of the lecture. We have a, a stage where we're committing code to an, a, a, a code repository. And that, that code then will go through a, a testing stage, a testing process. And it might go through multiple testing processes in parallel. And once it goes through a, a testing process, then it will be deployed to a staging area where additional testing may take place. And this might be integration testing. It could be performance testing, like capacity testing. Ultimately, though, the, the code progresses to a deployment to the production stage. So each in, during each stage, the code is promoted and we are gaining in, in increasing, uh, we, are, we are sort of increasing assurance that our code is deployable, that our code will work in a production environment. 